no gimmicks, just a Black Friday Toyota takeover. Toyota, let's go places. Good morning, America. Breaking news, the death toll climbing after a massive earthquake overseas, killing hundreds, sending buildings crumbling, people running for their lives. President Trump shaking hands and praising his relationship with the Philippines' controversial leader. While back here at home, the Republican crisis grows over Senate candidate Roy Moore and those allegations he had a relationship with a 14-year-old. ABC News exclusive. One of the women accusing Louis C.K. of sexual misconduct now telling her story only on GMA. And on the road to recovery, we are live from the Gulf Coast, tracing the path of those three monster hurricanes that killed hundreds. And look at this apartment complex. Both sides of the walls completely blown out. People lost their lives here. This morning, a remarkable journey, revealing resilience and massive need as millions still struggle for food, power, and shelter. And here in my hometown, Houston, the hidden crisis. I mean, this is, this this is, is your life. Everything. And we find that mother who was stranded on her roof Sorry. and the hero who let people make his store their home. Mattress Mac with a new surprise this morning for his city. A very special edition of Good Morning America starts now. Live in Times Square, this is GMA with Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and Michael Strahan. And good morning, America. Great to have you with us this Monday morning. It is a special one here on GMA. We are live in those areas hit so hard by recent hurricanes. You see Robin there surveying all the damage still there in Puerto Rico. And then we have some other remarkable images coming in. This is the Florida Keys. Many weeks after the storm struck there, our team is reporting from the heart of the path of destruction this morning. As we mentioned, Robin is right there in Puerto Rico. Michael is in Houston and Rob is in the Florida Keys. There is still so much need and we are going to be hearing from all of them just ahead. Yeah, all morning long, but first that breaking news overnight, a devastating 7.3 magnitude earthquake has rocked the Middle East overnight. Hundreds dead along the border of Iran and Iraq, an urgent search for survivors now. And our senior foreign correspondent Ian Panel is in London with all the latest. Good morning, Ian. Yeah, good morning, George. That deadly 7.3 magnitude earthquake centered near the Iran-Iraq border and just 40 miles below the Earth's surface, which, of course, increased the risk of death and destruction. These are some of the images of what happened when it struck. People running for their lives from a restaurant and a local TV station reporter who was on air as a quake struck. You can see the panic on his face. More than 330 killed and thousands injured, the vast majority of them centered actually in Iran itself. Now, people are in severe need of aid and assistance. Tens of thousands now homeless without shelter, power or water. More aftershocks still being felt as the rescue operation kicks in and the desperate search for survivors continues. George. Yeah, a long day ahead. Ian Panel, thanks very much. All right, and back here at home, their calls are growing for Alabama Senate candidate Roy Moore to drop out of the race. After that report, he allegedly had a sexual encounter with a 14-year-old girl when he was in his 30s, but Moore is not backing down. Our chief national correspondent, Tom Yamas, is here with some new developments. Tom, good morning. Amy, good morning to you. Now, the campaign tells me even if President Trump himself would call and ask for him to drop out, he would still stay in this race. That election now less than a month away, and the former judge telling his supporters he's going to sue the Washington Post. This morning, the Senate race in Alabama possibly about to get uglier. Candidate Roy Moore standing defiant in the face of growing calls from his own party to step aside. Over the weekend, vowing to turn the tables after being accused of molesting a 14-year-old girl and dating teenagers while he was a district attorney 38 years ago. In the next few days, there will be revelations about the motivations and the content of this article. They will be made, brought to the public. Moore yet to provide that proof, which he's been promising for days, would discredit the allegations uncovered by the Washington Post. To think that grown women would wait 40 years to come before, right before an election, to bring charges is absolutely unbelievable. And overnight, Moore saying he plans to sue the paper. These attacks are involved a minor child, completely unfalse and untrue, and for which they will be sued. But now, one of Moore's former co-workers, Teresa Jones, saying she believes the accusers, tweeting, 
As a deputy DA in Gadsden, when Roy Moore was there, it was common knowledge about Roy's propensity for teenage girls. Something Moore was directly asked about on the Sean Hannity radio show. Do you remember dating girls that young at that time? Not generally, no. If I did, I, you know, I'm not going to dispute anything, but I don't remember anything like that. Moore's answers in that interview, along with the accusations leading to several Republican senators exactly to call for him to drop out. Uh, from my point of view, uh, you know, I have to say, I think the... Accusations have more credibility than the denial. I think it would be best if Roy would just step aside. Any person who believes that these allegations are not that bad, I don't want them to be part of the Republican Party. I think if the allegations are true, there's no doubt that he should step aside, and not for the party, but for the American people. More than 40 Republican senators saying he should step aside if the allegations are true. A sentiment shared by the White House, whose handling of the Roy Moore accusations got the SNL treatment. I mean, Mike, look, it's all lies. I'm not that guy. Perhaps, Roy, perhaps. But it's hard to convince people that you're not into young girls when you dress like Woody from Toy Story. <laughs> Now, in another bizarre twist to this story, Coles, Kerrig, and Eloquie uh, tweeting they are pulling their ads from the Sean Hannity TV show after customers complained about Sean Hannity's apparent support for Roy Moore. In turn, Hannity fans have called for a boycott of those companies. The allegations and importance of this race clearly much bigger than the December 12th election in Alabama, Amy. And, Tom, there are reports now that there are polls that show the race tightening. There any truth to those polls? Yeah, there's been a handful of polls that have come out since this Washington story broke, and the campaign acknowledged they have taken a hit, especially with undecideds. But I've spoken to a lot of people who know Alabama politics, and they still believe Roy Moore, if he stays in, will win this race. All right, Tom, thank it's you. It's a deep yep. red state. Okay, Tom, thanks. Let's get the latest on this now from President Trump. On the final leg of his trip through the Asia and the Philippines, our chief White House correspondent, John Carl, has been with Trump every stop on the way. And, John, the White House is in a holding pattern on the whole Roy Moore issue. Any sense if the president will ever weigh in definitively? Well, we're told he won't weigh in while he's over here on Asia, but he is about to head back home. The expectation among his senior aides is that he won't get involved in a big way on this. He's already said that if the allegations are proven true, uh, that Moore should step down. Don't expect much major uh, out of him beyond that, although nobody really knows for sure. And, George, there is a scenario that uh, I've heard those close to the president talk about, that if Moore goes through with this, if he wins, uh, the Senate with a two-thirds vote uh, could decide not to seat him. That would mean another vacancy can see in Alabama uh, an opportunity for the governor to name a replacement, perhaps even the current attorney general, the former Alabama senator, uh, Jeff Sessions. Yeah, either not to seat him or expel him if indeed he is seated. In meantime, the president facing a real backlash over those comments where he seemed to suggest that he believed Vladimir Putin's denial of meddling in our elections. You've got two former intelligence officials yesterday saying that Trump is being played by Putin. Uh, yes, and in terms of a response to that, I think you already heard it even before they came out to articulate that. The president actually calling uh, both the head, the former heads of the CIA and DNI, the two top intelligence officials in the country, political hacks. Uh, I, I think that that's the, uh, that's the response from here on that. You know, and John, the president's wrapping up this trip right now. We seem to have a pattern uh, around the trip of the president really uh, cozying up to these strongmen overseas, whether it's President Xi in China. We see that handshake there at the ASEAN meeting, uh, President Duterte in the Philippines, and, of course, Putin. Uh, a very warm uh, uh, conversations, uh, receptions from, from all of these, not just the strong, but also the Democratic leaders in South Korea, uh, in Japan. Really striking, though, with Duterte. The White House said uh, that human rights would be brought up. We were told it was only brought up ever so briefly in his conversations. Okay, John Carl, thanks very much. Let's get more on this now from our chief political analyst, Matthew Dowd, also Megan McCain here from The View. And, and Matt, let me begin with uh, this, these Roy Moore allegations really seem to have split the Republican Party. Some senators now saying they believe the weight of evidence goes against uh, Roy Moore, but the, they, they seem to be in a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation with the Senate candidate. Well, the problem they have is, is that they have to pick between winning a race and principles yeah. in the course of this. And my feeling about this is the default position ought to be believe the women. There has never been an incident where multiple women came forward to accuse a powerful man that turned out to be not true in this. So I think there's two options left for Republicans. They can either support a write-in candidate or support the Democrat Doug Jones in this race. Because at this point in time, there is no way it looks like Roy Moore is going to get out of the race. Those are the only two options. Push for a write-in 
or support the Democrats. Megan, it doesn't seem like that's where the majority of the party uh, is going right now. And this could cause a big problem for Republicans going into next year's election, especially with women voters. A hundred percent. But I also think what's fascinating about this is Roy Moore is a Steve Bannon pick, bred, tried and true. And if this ends up sort of blowing up in our face and by some miracle, he doesn't end up becoming a senator. It really puts a silver bullet into these candidates that Steve Bannon is putting up across the country. I will say the Republican Party has a woman problem in general right now, and this certainly isn't helping things. When you're talking about the difference between a 14-year-old and a 16-year-old, the age of consent, to say this isn't the messaging we should be on right yeah, now. Yeah, he said he didn't generally lately. date high school students when he yeah, was in his 30s. It's disgusting, obviously, and I think all women, especially if you're a young conservative woman, you should be worried about the kind of messaging that sends across the country, especially given the climate we're in right now. But let me just say, four women on the record, 30 off the record. This isn't a witch hunt from the liberal media. This is something we're going to have to deal with. And I think that it's it's unfortunate for people like Matt and I who really just want to see good candidates be put into place. And unfortunately, when you care just about populism and about winning the primary and not so much about winning the general, this is where we're at. This problem is not going away. Meantime, Matt, you also have those comments from the president about Vladimir Putin uh, over the weekend. This, this, this it raised so many questions because the president says, well, wait, I, I don't just believe Putin. I believe he believes it. But his intelligence agencies say Putin ordered the meddling in the election. Well, it's like Donald Trump on a dating site when he has a relationship with Putin. You have to check. It's complicated. <laughs> I mean, he's in a serious situation here because he's got all these accusations here domestically. He wants, it seems like he wants to believe Vladimir Putin over any of its intelligence agencies in the course of this. I think he's in a very difficult pot, spot. And I think it's very concerning that Don Donald Trump seems much more friendly with authoritarian people around the world than people that actually support human rights. Right. Okay, Matthew, Dad, Megan McCain, thank you both very much. Amy. All right, also this morning, George, there are new and troubling accusations of sexual abuse in the world of U.S. women's gymnastics. Ali Raisman, the captain, and the 2012 and 2016 Olympic gold medal winning teams now joining that growing list of women accusing team Dr. Larry Nasser of inappropriate behavior. And ABC's Adrian Bankert is here with more on this story. Adrian, good morning. Yes, another troubling testimonial here, Amy. Amy, Ali Raisman saying that she is angry and still processing what started happening to her as a teenager with hopes her story will help other young athletes. This morning, six-time Olympic medalist Allie Raisman alleges for the first time on camera in an interview with 60 Minutes that when she was 15, former U.S. women's gymnastics team doctor Larry Nasser started sexually abusing her. I was in denial. I was like, I don't think, I, I don't even know what to think. You don't want to let yourself believe, you know, I am, I am, I am a victim of, of sexual abuse. Like, it's really not an easy thing to let yourself believe that. And a year before Raceman would make history as part of the final five at the 2016 Rio Games, she says it was the questions asked by an investigator hired by USA Gymnastics to look into Nasser's behavior that led to the realization of what was happening to her. And I said, you know, well, he, his touching makes me uncomfortable, but he's so nice to me. And I, I don't think he does it on purpose because you know, I think he cares about me. I think it's important for people to know, too, I'm still trying to put the pieces together today. You know, it impacts you for the rest of your life. Raceman's 2012 Olympics teammate, Michaela Maroney, also recently came forward saying she was abused by Nasser, adding to the growing list of more than 125 women who now say they are also victims. I care a lot. You know, when I see these young girls that come up to me and they ask for pictures or autographs, whatever it is, I just, I can't, every time I look at them, every time I see them smiling, I just think, I just want to create change so that they never, ever have to go through this. Larry Nasser remains in prison after pleading guilty to charges of child pornography and not guilty to charges of sexual assault. His attorney tells Good Morning America he's aware of Raisman's allegations but can't comment due to a gag order. Now, in a statement to ABC News, USA Gymnastics tells us we are appalled by the conduct of which Larry Nasser is accused. We are committed to doing what's right and we want to work with Ali and all interested athletes to keep athletes safe.
All right, so brave of her to come forward. Thank you so much, Adrian. Turning now to chaos at the Mall of America for some early holiday shoppers after two men were stabbed at the Macy's store. Police say the victims were fighting back against a man who was trying to steal personal belongings from a dressing room. Children nearby who were waiting in line to see Santa Claus saw those victims being treated. The injuries thankfully not considered life-threatening and also thankfully that suspect is in custody. Yeah, that was such a scary situation. We're going to move on now to our special look at the road recovery from those massive hurricanes this fall hit the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Houston. We want to go start out with Robin in Puerto Rico this morning. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, George and Amy. It has been 54 days since Hurricane Maria slammed into Puerto Rico and more than half of the island is still without power. Thousands still don't have access to drinking water and that's why places like this the World Central Kitchen. They're making such an impact in hard-hit communities. These volunteers serving and delivering thousands of meals all across Puerto Rico. The U.S. military just announced it is going to start winding down its operations here because relief efforts are starting to move from the crisis phase to the recovery phase. But FEMA is here for the long haul, and I surveyed the damage from above on a helicopter ride-along with a man leading FEMA's recovery efforts, Mike Byrne. Some have been frustrated. How, how do you speak to them? You know, I, I, we just keep working it. You know, uh, you know, we're bringing in lots of people. We're bringing in lots of different programs. We're, uh, we've given out over $100 million in aid directly to the uh, citizens. Uh, but, you know, we're not just not going to stop. We're going to keep at it and at it and at it until we make a difference for everybody. And I have to say, being in that helicopter and surveying much of this island, you can see in those remote areas, the desperation is still there. And it's, it's really mind-boggling. And about 100 miles from here is the U.S. Virgin Islands, and the situation is just as dire, if not more so. Residents there, they suffered a one-two punch. First, a direct hit by Irma. Two weeks later, Maria, and by the way, both were Category 5 hurricanes when they made landfall there. So many homes are completely destroyed, many people having to rebuild from scratch. And I, I had the opportunity to, to really look at the damage up close this weekend. And I have some incredible stories of survival and recovery. And we're going to share the Virgin Island story coming up in our next half hour. Michael is in Houston, his beloved hometown. He went to witness destruction right after Harvey. And Michael, how are things going there now? Good morning. Things are going well, Robin. You know, as you can see, there's so much damage where you are in Puerto Rico. And as you said, I'm here in Houston. And at first glance, you might think everything here is back to normal. But take a look at these pictures from this same street two months ago when it was under four feet of water. But I want to show you what a real problem lies for so many people here in this area. I'm going to take you for a walk inside of this house. And this house is one of 136,000 homes like this in Houston. And as you can see, the volunteers are in, in this home and they are they're painting the mold um, protector on the wood so you don't have to have that problem again to make this house inhabitable again. And there are still 50,000 people who are in FEMA hotels around this city. So there's still so much work to do. And later in the show, we're going to check in with some of the brave people that we met in the days after Harvey. And I'm going to go back to you in the studio, George and Amy. Thank you. I'm going to check back in with Mattress Mac later right. on. A lot more from across the storm zone all morning long. But now we want to go to Ginger. We've got a lot going on there. Yeah, what an epic season it was. I'll have more coming up on the facts and kind of wrapping it up. But don't be surprised in Pennsylvania, New York, parts of New England to see a wintry mix and a little slick roads this morning. The Select City is brought to you now by Wonder Rated PG. Audiences everywhere are raving about Wonder. <laughs> the movie it made me laugh this movie is charming and delightful even your dog agrees it was awesome to see the book come to life no 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 let me show you how it's done it relates to everyone you are a wonder amazing wonder rated pg in theaters friday after an unseasonably cool weekend, yes, today much of the same. We've got rain moving out of here. Clouds are going to be slow to clear. But once again, you can see with the average temperature of 59 degrees, we're well under the average yet again today. In fact, all week long, we're going to see our temperatures below average. 50% of this month so far has been below average for high temperatures. Could see an early morning sprinkle on Thursday, but Thursday is going to be our warmest day out of the next 10. We'll track some more rain coming in for Saturday afternoon.
Here our ABC News exclusive, one of the women accusing Louis C.K. of sexual misconduct. She's telling her story now. We're going to have his response to the allegations. And then the incredible near miss, a little boy jumping off a bus, then running right into the path of a truck. The heart-stopping close call when we come back. Every day, on every street, in every town, across